Hey everybody, Ken Coleman here. It's time for another episode of Backseat Driver. What I love so much about this is the stories that we get to hear and share with you. And when I think of story and the importance of the role it plays in our own lives, well, I can't think of a better person to have a conversation with about story than my guest today. Hey, dude. Hey, <laughs> Good to see you. How are you? I'm great. Ah, you went with the Volkswagen. In the backseat today is Donald Miller. A student of story, Don has written several New York Times bestsellers like Scary Close and Blue Like Jazz, which is now a major motion picture. His Storyline blog is currently helping people every day to live a better story. I can't wait to share his story, and I hope it changes yours. When do you first realize, I think I want to write? When I was a kid uh, in junior high, I actually attended the high school talent show. I just asked my youth pastor down at the local church, hey, can I write a review of the talent show, you know, like a movie review. <laughs> sure. For the youth group newsletter, which goes out to like, you know, 80 people. And uh, he goes, yeah. You know, he didn't want to write the column that week. Right, so he sure. goes, yeah. And, you know, people kept stopping me in the hall at church saying, wow, you're actually a really good writer. Now I'm in junior high, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the first time anybody had ever really affirmed me or anything that I'd, I'd done. Somebody saying, hey, you're good at this. And I sort of chased those accolades in, in writing until, uh, 10, 15 years later, wrote my first book. At some point, you began to shift your thinking as to what you're doing. I want you to describe that for us. I, I loved running my conference. I loved speaking at my conference. Uh, and But the problem was I only had about 350 people coming to each conference. I couldn't figure out why do I have millions of readers, and then when I do a conference, only 350 people come. So I actually got on a plane one day, and the guy sitting next to me on the plane was reading my latest book which the conference is based on. And I said, how do you like that book? And he looked at me and he said, I really like this book. In fact, I'm flying to Indianapolis today to hear this guy speak. I said, really? Because I hear that guy's kind of a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he just looked a little bit offended and said, well, I, you know, I, I don't, I've never met him, but I, I don't, I've never heard that, that he's a jerk and just not making the connection. <laughs> but what I had, Ken, was I had two hours with the guy to ask questions about my quote unquote brand. What I discovered was that he was a big fan but couldn't articulate very clearly how I had changed his life or really who I was. And then it occurred to me, the reason that the word isn't spreading about my conference is because I'm not giving people the words to say so that it can spread. People really need simple, simple messaging. And uh, so I worked on my messaging through the filter of story. Everything that I'd ever learned about telling stories which is the most powerful tool to compel a human brain. How do we use that story breakdown to figure out what our role is, how we interact with others, how overwhelming life and the big story is if we miss this? Yeah, well, a, a, a story is a character that wants something and overcomes conflict to get it. Story is really just a condensed version of life. And so what would happen if our life, you and I, were to sit down and say, okay, let's get clear about what my life story is. The power of a great writer comes when they are willing to throw things out. So I think the last book I turned in, when I finished it, it was 110,000 words. And when I published it, it was 54,000 words. Wow. So more than 50% of that book was thrown away. And that's the power also of creating a great life plan. It's so much of the stuff just needs to go. Mm -hmm. You need to clarify one or two things that you really want to accomplish. We need to have a relationship with conflict that is not conflict avoidant, but we need to move into it. Uh, those little things that work to create a great screenplay also work to create a great life. Mm, that's good. All right, after you sign some books here, I want to keep digging into the story thing. Yeah. Have you ever been in here? No. This is cool. cool. Bookman, Bookwoman, Nashville, Tennessee. Hi, how are you? I'm Ken, this is Don. Hey. Don, how are you? Welcome. What's your favorite Don Miller book? Do you have one? Blue Lock Jazz. Oh, it is? All right. Oh, thanks. Do you have the new one, Scary Close, in here? We did. We made these sold out. Old to be a best-selling author. You look at this bookstore, and they're just full of stories. And what it, what it tells us is that the human brain longs for story the way we, we want uh, food and water. We just have to have them. I mean, in, in America, we will spend $10 billion next year at the box office. 
and all we're buying are stories. That's right. Used bookstores are my favorite. You know, uh, the real gem is when you get a used book and it's got somebody else's notes in it, right? And you're, then you realize you're, you're not alone reading this book. Many people that's have read cool. this book. That's cool. They're like handing the baton to you. Yeah, that's exactly I got exactly something it. out of this, now here's that's yours. That's exactly it. What's great about a bookstore like this is that they've managed to stay open with Amazon. 50% of my books sell through Amazon. 50% through one store. Tell me about writing your first book. Well, I, I was actually working at a publishing company when I started writing, and uh, I, I wanted to be a writer before I worked at the publishing company, but once I got a job with the company, I saw that writers weren't, uh, you know, the, the dream of like the romantic writer's life, and you can even better, you can't, you can never be a writer, it just kind of went away right, when right. I saw who they actually were, right? <laughs> They're just insecure folks like me, right, you know, right. hammering it out at a typewriter. And tell us, what were you doing? for the publishing company at that time? What specific day-to-day? -day? It was a small publishing company and I, I got a, I got started at the bottom and then in four years I was president of the company. Hello. And uh, Yeah, so I loved business and I loved books and it, the, yeah, I got to bring those two worlds together and I just thrived in that environment. And at night I would go home and tinker with a book and I remember I was at Common Ground Coffee Shop in Portland, Oregon. I can show you the chair if it's still there that I was sitting in and I wrote one paragraph and I knew this is gonna go all the way to the end of the book. I'm gonna keep really? going. I just knew it, I just knew it. It was just a great paragraph, and you know, and I think that's all that just any writer started. That's all any writer's trying to do is find a, a good sentence. All right, we've talked a lot about story. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important that each of us live a good story with our lives? Uh, you know, the story, Robert McKee is this guru on story, he's really a brilliant guy. And he talks about the fact that when you hear stories, what's happening in your brain is that there's a moral compass being set. And I used to think the number one way we consume stories was movies and television, those sorts of things, maybe books. But I, I've come to the realization that's just not true. The number one way we consume stories is through each other. That you're actually living a story and I'm living a story. In other words, you, Ken, are setting the moral compass in my brain. You're teaching me what's worth pursuing. You're teaching me what's worth sacrificing for. And that's adjusting things in, in my brain. So the reason we should live a great story is because if we live a great story, our kids are learning what's beautiful in life, what's worth sacrificing for. Our neighbors are learning that. And, and then they start living different stories because their compass has been adjusted too. It couldn't be more important to live a great story. Pretty cool to come to an independent bookstore. I know, and, and leave, with, uh, books. leave with books. Free books, you gotta book love Book man, it. book woman, Nashville, right. Tennessee. Now, you ready to go get back in the bug? I'm ready. Uh, actually, I wanna show you my VW. You showed me yours. You ready to walk around it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a rear engine, just like the old bugs and buses. You can actually pull this engine out by yourself. Oh, you gotta take me for a spin. Let's go. I would be so stoked about taking this out on the beach, one of those beaches <laughs> in 